you're tuning in to the High Performance Path podcast and I'm your host Alex. If you want to increase your productivity, enhance your mental performance, hack your sleep and build a bulletproof body, then you're in the right place. Get ready as we dive into interviews with performance coaches, business owners and health professionals to find out their daily routines, habits and movement practices. All right, let's go. All right, listeners, welcome back to another episode of the High Performance Path podcast. I'm sitting here today with a interesting guest. I have on today's show, Amanda Benalik. She's from Quintessence Coaching, and she's a personal development coach. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Alex. Um, so let's start with a bit of background. Um, how did you get into the fitness industry and what do you do now? Tell us a little bit about that story. High school, I specialised in fitness, stepped across the waters from New Zealand to Australia and came across a company that trained aerobics instructors back in 1982. So I stayed in the industry in many levels, evolving into personal training, managing fitness teams, um, managing clubs. So I feel I've done every job there is possibly you can do in the fitness industry over 35 years. Um, and within that, there was a lot of um, my own growth, logically. And I found in a consulting basis, whether it be with your personal clients, um, whether when I was actually the sales and marketing manager for the Hilton Hotels gym in the city for 11 years. In Sydney. Yes, here in Sydney. I found a lot of it, the skills involved were consulting a client. But when you are in selling a gym product or essentially selling fitness, you're needing to get into the head of why people want the results they desire. So it was Without realizing it, I was formulating um, the psychology and refining that, dealing with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, then when I felt that I needed a step away, I was really kind of baked as it was, being in the fitness industry. I'd done all that I really felt I could do at the level I was at. Um, it was what, what's next? And it was a friend out of the blue who said to me, do you realize that you, you've got all the makings to be a coach? And I was like, Oh my gosh, you're right. So I decided to put on a new hat, delve deep into the behavioral psychology of individuals, and that's where I am now. That's basically what business. coaching is. Yeah, totally. So you find that within fitness, if you can truly dig deep into why people want the results and what the barriers have been and currently are in their lives psychologically, if you can break through that, um, you find that you can lead people to finding the right way for themselves to get um, the physicality routine happening in their life, breaking through barriers and making a sustainable process for them. So they achieve, what I mean by sustainable is that not only do they achieve their goals in a nice, timely, healthy manner, um, because everyone's a case-by-case -case basis of what they need to achieve and what they're, what they're overcoming in their issues, um, that for it to be sustainable, that they're actually living a fulfilling life of being really happy about how they are in their physical state and emotionally then what is going out from that self-help process that they've literally put themselves through, um, that they're actually really truly happy within themselves. And it's a very holistic approach that I take when dealing with people's personal development. You know, what, what we can um, overcome and then what we can achieve on the road to achieving our goals. That's the package. Yeah, I think that's interesting that you bring up the sustainability of your health and fitness journey. Mm. Because if you think about it, we we have to move every single day totally. and we eat, you know, however many meals we eat a day, three, four, five meals a day. So whatever you choose to, whatever your diet is that you choose, it has to be sustainable because you do it at least three times a day. And whatever you choose as your movement practice, we have to move every day. Totally. So it has to be sustainable and it has to be something that you can do every single day so it can't be something that you 
you struggle and you don't enjoy just because your goal, you have an end goal and once you reach that goal, you're going to stop it. That's the wrong mindset to approach your health and wellness. You have to be able to, whatever you choose, has to be sustainable. Mm. So I think Good. it's interesting you talk about that. Yeah. So you're maintaining yeah. on an ongoing basis. So I want to talk a little bit about human connection and why that is important. Mm -hmm. Um, so do you want to dive into a little bit about that? Cause I know you, sure. I know you, I know you are big on human connection. Yeah. Now the connection essentially comes from what I learned, um, within the behavioral psychology. Connection is one of our six core human needs. Now they exist on a universal basis, these human needs. And you will find that the thread of these six core needs um, exist for everyone because it's universal. But there'll be two of those that lead you more than the others. And they're called your core drivers. Now, the six needs are essentially certainty, uncertainty, which comes in the flavor of variety and adventure. You have significance, love and connection, growth and contribution. The first four, however, of our personality and they drive us on a daily basis. So certainty, variety, significance and love and connection must be met like the air we breathe. In the fitness industry, connection is a two-way street. Um, it's a need that we want fulfilled. So if you're the one in service, which is in the fitness industry, which are your receptionists, your um, fitness team, your personal trainers, all the, the, the cogs of the, the gym itself. These are human beings as well. And they are also part of that human need concept of their connection needs to be met. Your customers in flow in through the gym, their need for connection needs to be met. But there is also then the dynamic, if it's not your core driver, then we need to indicate what is the driver. And we do so through communication is connection. If we're communicating in a respectful, um, sincere, warm way all the time, you're going to pick up the, the right way that someone wants to be communicated with. You need to listen. You're constantly listening when you are with a client. The more questions you ask a client, the more information you're going to get. And it's important to listen to key words that they would say. If they um, want to get validation, you know, I just want I just want to get to the result. I just want to know that I want to make it because the result is all that I'm after. Then that type of energy is certainty. Okay. Um, if there's someone that says, you know, yeah, I like to mix it up a bit. I want to do a bit of this. I want to do a bit. I don't want to get too bored. Well, they're one of their drivers is variety, variety. okay? Um, and then if someone says, look, you know, I just want to, I just want to check in with myself and feel good that I'm achieving the result, that I know the, the benchmark goals along the way, that it's working for me and then I, you know, I can acknowledge that I'm on the right track. Significance is their core driver. So these are words we need to pick up on. And once you identify what their drivers are, that's how you communicate. So if you know significance, as I just said, is what they would motivate them. So flavors of significance are acknowledgement, validation, respect. If they're coming in on a regular basis, acknowledge them when they come in on a regular basis. Know their name. Say, hey, Jeff, how are you going today? Hey, Sarah, it's so good to see you. My God, you smashed it out last week. How did you finish up? Did you recover really well? opens dialogue, they're getting validated because you're acknowledging totally that they're giving a commitment to the process, but you see them and you're opening connection because everyone wants connection no matter what. If you can create a flow of where you really do see your customers and so they're in a hurry, they check in and you swipe in. If you're seeing that person on a regular basis, know their name at least. Make it a point that there are points about that person that count 
that help you remember where they're at. And if it helps also for the personal trainers or the fitness people, you know what their goals are, check in with them. How are you feeling is a much better question than asking them what they, how they think. Because you want to always tap into their heart and how they're feeling about the processes, not what they're thinking about the processes. We need to switch away from the thinking side of our brain, which is more illogical, unemotional, um, affected by society and what people think we should be doing. Because at the end of the day, they're in a mix process. We're motivated to go and exercise and achieve a certain result because we want to look the part for what society says we should look like because media is a powerful thing. But the feeling thing is the most powerful, powerful motivator of all. Because if you really look in that mirror and you just really don't like what's coming back at you, it's irrelevant what's going on in the outside of the world because you're going to only be dri driven truly by your own feeling. People only quit smoking when they're ready and that comes from inside them. People start doing good things for themselves when they're ready and that comes from inside them too. Cool. Um, if you could give one bit of advice to anyone who's kind of starting in the fitness industry, what, would you, what advice would you give them? Knowledge is power. But confidence is what empowers that knowledge. And it's really important to not wait for competence because competence only comes from practice, trial, error, practice. Just have the mindset that of confidence to step out and do the doing, taking action, and competence will start coming anyway. So confidence needs to come first. I think a lot of people suffer from something called imposter syndrome. Yeah. Which is related to what you're talking there. I know I've struggled with that previously because starting out in the fitness industry, you kind of, a lot of people feel like, oh, like I'm not qualified to, to like be giving this program or this advice to this person, but you are. Um, I think that's interesting. Do you mm. want to touch on, have you seen this? People oh, suffering from, well, I uh, like I bet you would have. In our industry, I think over the years, it's tickled me because some of the um, lack of credibility does come from a lack of professionalism on some part of, of people in the industry. Um, and I get quite blunt sometimes when I talk. And I get passionate about this. Um, so I do apologise no, <laughs> if I right. throw out a word like, you're go such a it. wanker. No, go for it. Come across those terms. Oh, yeah. Um, but it's unfortunate because, I mean, like you'll come across in a social element. You could, oh, I remember back in the 90s, it was a common thing. You'd be in a nightclub and you'd recognise somebody and it's because they happen to be a, a member of a gym. So they're exercising on a regular basis. But then they're having a chat with a girl and the girl goes, so what do you do? I'm a personal trainer. <laughs> You, you look good, but you're not a personal trainer. And you see them, the toilets are that way. <laughs> yeah. um, so it was very much, you know, you, you had a commonality of the apple on a stick physique. You still do. Um, where the, a lot of vanity is involved in exercise. And with that, um, if Wait, people what, misplace. Sorry, what do you mean by apple on a stick? Well, they just don't train their legs. <laughs> <laughs> forget about the legs because it hurts <laughs> fancy that so you get <laughs> you know what i mean yeah i see plenty of people that like that yes um and so i've been in the industry for so long that you'll you'll just see so many different um dynamics and personalities that then give it a questionable point because people say oh yeah, yeah you know sure you're a personal trainer but when it comes to the imposter syndrome i think it's again it's it's confidence if you're passionate and it's an area that you really want to be in, you're not an imposter because you're being true to yourself. And I think that's where you need to start is um, you're learning and we're always learning because that's what growth is about, constantly growing. We'll take things, you know, to the end of our days, we'll be learning something. That's what the old saying comes up, you know, you learn something every day. 
Yeah, you do. Might not be something major, but geez, wow, it's something, you know, you're just layering. The passion behind what you want to do is important because you're being you. You can't possibly be an imposter when you're being true to yourself. I think just believe in yourself. I've done so much in my lifetime. I mean, I haven't consistently done fitness. I mean, there was a time in my life where I was traveling an awful lot and having fitness qualifications was an incredible asset. When I was living and working in Canada, I was um, didn't have a work visa. But I was being asked to teach aerobics in gyms over there as the star Australian aerobics <laughs> instructor. <laughs> Firstly, they didn't have a solid platform of really uh, pre-choreographed aerobics um, and structural format to aerobics, which is what came through here in Australia through the Les Mills organisation. And that was my foundation was with him. Um, I was Les Mills, um, which is Philip Mills. He's the person yep. behind the organization. I was his PA in 1982-83. Really? When he was literally creating and bringing his company together. Um, being in Canada and being in the fitness industry there, again, the imposter syndrome kind of like was niggling underneath me there because of it. Hardly was I a star Australian aerobics instructor, yeah. but their perspective is they loved my accent. I didn't think it was that Australian, but to them it was. And I had something different to offer. So for a short spell in time, they fulfilled my significance. <laughs> <laughs> and I was being validated that, you know, I had something to contribute. And I had fun at the same time. So there you oh, go. That's I good said, to hear. Just put yourself out there. Now, you would have seen um, social media come into the fitness industry. It wouldn't have been around when, when you started. What's your take on that? Do you think it's it's a good thing or a bad thing? Um, social media, with any medium, is going to be a grey zone. Definitely you're going to have extremes of bad um, because that's the shadow. We have within, uh, within humanity, within ourselves personally, we do have different aspects of ourselves. We have like all the good, which is very easy to acknowledge, but then the dark and not so good part of ourselves, which is our shadow, we kind of like don't want to acknowledge. Um, the, the shadow exists in social media. Um, and I think it comes down to judgment, personal judgment with whatever you want to view and, and take on, add your opinion to or, or take stuff from. It's a case-by-case -case basis. It's a great platform. We need social media because it's, the, it's a global communication tool to not only get a verbal but a visual image across fast. Um, we can connect to people um, to get a message across. So we j it comes down, of course, there's going to be the shady side of it. you just got to use your gumption and figure it out that it's not so good and don't take that on. That's an example of a bad thing. Yeah. Be I smart about it. I think, like, I I know people that, you know, they they think social media is bad. Like, it is good and sometimes it is bad, but I think I see some people just going off social media and they just, they just don't use it, delete their accounts. I don't think that that is the right way to go about it, like boycotting it. I think it's here to stay. It's mm. not going anywhere. Totally. So, so I think you need to, instead of boycotting and not using it, I think you just need to, or well, I think people should just learn to use it properly mm. and just be aware of when it's, neg when it's impacting them in a negative way yeah. and just having boundaries or limits mm. so that it doesn't affect you in a negative way yeah. because it's, it's not going anywhere. So I think... We should just learn to live with it, but but use it in a healthy way. Totally. It's like with so many different other aspects in our life. There are ways that we don't want to be treated and how we treat others. We set boundaries. So the same with social media. You set boundaries for yourself and you create your own screening process. It's like learning to have a, a healthy relationship with social media. And then it will settle. So what are your, what's your take on, there's been a rise in small 
group fitness gyms mm. as opposed to the the global uh, globo gyms. Yeah. What's your take on these kind of uh, group fitness gyms in regards to human connection? Do you think they're a good thing? I think they're huge. I think it's about time. Um, for them to really work, however, as a business model, um, for example, like the franchises, um, you you need to have lots of them in a postal code. Like Anytime Fitness, for you to buy in on that franchise, um, as a franchisee uh, owner, you need to have about two to three gyms in a postcode for it to be financially uh, returnable for you. Because your clients also are going to buy in on the fact that they have multiple access. So they want to use that. So to have then a niche within that postcode is you're going to get the return for that same person's money. Because the business model is that people start might buy in on your membership to that particular location. But if they start frequenting another location on, on a higher basis, there's a pattern. Someone else might own that. So the money needs to then be tipped into their kit, not yours. So there's a balance that goes on within the franchisee um, money share. So holding a postcode is cool. Personally, for the person going, they're going to come across a community. So there's going to be people in a close-knit area that they're going to see the regular faces. So you can create a social network easier out of those places. With that, then you could have things um, like what my nephew's doing. He's going to, he's thinking of going to um, Thailand and doing a big trek in Thailand, which is a trip that's been organized through his Anytime Fitness manager. Oh, wow. So there are things that can be created through community better that way in a small, um, well, it's not really small because, of course, you want a lot of people in your membership base, but because they're more community-focused. Where I was um, in suburban concept gyms where you're, crea you're creating a membership base from streams of traffic coming in from all locations after city work, going to city work. When you look in your database, the addresses are everywhere. You, it's harder to, cre to create community in that way because people are only really focusing on you as convenience because you were on route to work, for example. Um, the s gyms that are clustered and they're smaller, I think have an, a, a more connected opportunity. And with that, you could um, build more loyalty out of your customers because retention is gold. You don't want to be in, an, in a business where you're constantly having to keep building up your memberships because you've got to fall. Like logically, people cancel memberships. They change their jobs. They, they move. You know, they can't stay there. Um, and so you're constantly, of course, needing to, you know, have membership sales. But if you've got less people leaving because you're working on a really good retention model, you've got a management system in for that, um, then it just makes the margins better to control. Um, and that's where I step in in helping gyms, and that's creating retention models that are customized to suit them. So I would go in and analyze what their processes are. Um, I'd want to go in and then look into the culture of what's going on for the business and how that is affecting their um, customers, and then work off the most effective um, retention um, tools, as it were, so they've got loyalty and they actually are having great ways that they're building loyalty and, and communication with the network of their members. What's the, um, what's the most common mistake that you see gyms making or in that kind of area? Um, there's always going to be complaints. There's always, always, there will always be issues, always, always. Um, and I feel that if you do not communicate nicely to a customer, like if a customer comes to you with a complaint and you treat then that customer as a pest, like in the back of your mind, that's what you're feeling, um, and you're not really being sincere and really listening to that customer and showing empathy, because a complaint is feedback, not really a complaint, feedback. If they're giving you something they're not happy with, God, it's such a blessing that they're speaking up because there's 10 people that feel the same way they do and they're not saying anything. Ooh. So thank that person profusely for speaking up and giving you that feedback. 
and then say, look, I don't have an answer for you right now, if that is the case, but I really appreciate that. Is there a way that I can contact you? In a, are you available during the day? What's your best way that you'd like to be communicated with so I can let you know the outcome? And they went, oh, wow, okay. So you do own it fully. If you are receiving that feedback, if you can do something about it yourself, do it. If it's not within your uh, level of power, as it were, or of influence, upline it to management. Then still follow it up. Hey, that you know that feedback I gave you recently. You know what's happening there, because if you're in a line of contact with that customer, you want to be able to have an answer when they approach you if they haven't been communicated internally from your management. That is a mistake I make. That they're never being never being treated well. That they drop the ball. They don't take on board the feedback properly. They don't do anything about it, and they do not respond to the customer on their feedback. That I feel is really powerful because when people feel they're being heard, seen, and that you are doing something about making that gym environment better, that's gold. Interesting. Awesome. So I want to bring it back to a more individual level. What's the, um, what's the biggest mistake you see people making with your personal development coaching? What's the most common issue or barrier that people have into developing themselves into a better person? Um, I think people ba basically take assumption. They treat themselves as a, that's what most people do, when realistically they need to refine it back and go, no, what's true to me? Um, a generalization um, can be a bad thing. So I think the most common thing people do is they'll base their change and development on what they think others feel they should be doing, not what they themselves feel they should be doing. And that's to note it down. Stop all the noise. Stop all the expectations of the outside world because they can't control that. What you cannot control, you got to let go. What you can control is yourself and change yourself. So happiness needs to be um, reflected in what you can change and influence, control yourself. Then you'll find you'll settle. That's the common mistake is that people externalize their happiness on things they can't control. Sweet. All right. I want to get into a book recommendation. So if you could recommend one book, it doesn't have to be any kind of any category. If you could recommend one book, what would it be? I would say it's um, Tony Robbins, otherwise known as Anthony Robbins, called Awaken the Giant. I actually have it. I figured if you have a book, awesome. if you have a book to show, um, it enables people to really uh, cement their mind on it. This, I always read it. This is a go-to book of quite a few that I have. Um, he is a man that has modelled himself on excellence. I think most people are familiar or yeah. have heard of at least yeah. Tony Robbins. He's been in the personal development game for quite a while. Long time, more than 20 years. Yeah. yeah. So in 2005, he took the... Um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs and he refined it into the six core human needs in 2005. It's been the foundation of so much of his work and he's just grown and grown, creating many models from it. Great book for people who really want to peel off the onion as it were. We are an onion, we're many, many layers. Dig deep into yourself. It gives you many exercises to approach your own development um, and has a very holistic approach. Um, so it's a very, very strong, really powerful development book for people to buy. If it's one book that you want to, you know, you're not into buying lots of books, highly recommend it's one book definitely to buy. And what was it called again? Hi, uh, the Sorry to show you again. It yeah. is Awaken the Giant Within, Anthony Robbins. Sweet. A.K.A. Tony Robbins. A.K.A. Tony Robbins, yes. All right. So I want to move into the final three questions that I give every guest that comes on the show. So starting with the first one, if you could travel back in time 10 years, what advice would you give yourself? To, well, certainty wasn't something that, that I was really floating with in, a, in proper awareness. Knowing what I know now would be to back myself. Even if it feels like a wacky idea and not many people are doing it, don't worry about what people think. Just back yourself 100%. If you have... Um, if you're true to yourself and you know it feels right, I don't know what, you know, people say, I've got this intuition, I've got a feeling about it, back yourself. That's what recommendations I give myself. All right, next question. Um, if you could place a billboard 
anywhere in the world with anything on it, where would it be and what would it say or show? It could be image or words. There's a great quote uh, by Oprah Winfrey that I like. And it's a saying that says, if you undervalue yourself, the world will undervalue who you are. And I think that's profound. Because when you undervalue what you know what you do, then you're not giving it credibility. You are being a bit wishy-washy and you know, like this imposter syndrome, blah, 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 all these really negative thoughts stuff that gets attached. So don't do that. Don't undervalue what you do. What you do is great. Where would you put it? Ah, oh, if you undervalue what you do, the world will undervalue. What who part of the are. world do you think? I think I would whack it over a major freeway. You know where people just sit and get stuck and get stuck in their head with thinking things and there's just a major flow of traffic to and fro? That's where I'd put it. Boom, in nice. your face. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah. They've got nothing else to say. No. And that, that's all that's in front there's of them. There's your mantra right staring at you. You can't miss it. <laughs> yeah. So if you could give someone a habit to practice for 30 days and they would successfully do that for 30 days, what would it be? I think um, looking after your body, being aware of your body um, and understanding that our bodies biologically are two mechanisms, a, um, an aerobic system and an aerobic system. Sorry, aerobic and anaerobic. For 30 days, you need to realize that you need to get moving, as we've said. So if, if exercising early in the morning's you or in an evening's you, but I think morning's a, a beautiful regime. Um, getting up with sunrise, um, doing yoga, you know that way. I it's did that a this morning. Way to start, yeah. Great way to start the morning. So for every day for 30 days, do something, tap into, write a list of different things. It might be doing yoga in the morning. The next day you decide I'm going to walk at the beach in the morning. If you're lucky to be on a beach, go for a run, power walk, um, go into a gym. Go into a gym and get free access. I would like to try all the gyms. So get yourself a 20-day pass at a gym somewhere that you can add into your 30-day window. So you are doing something for half an hour, something different every day. Don't do the same thing because I think, the way we find what we like to do is trying different things. Trial you're and error. Giving your body that variety, the trial and error, giving you that body. So every day you've got something different to look forward to. So for the next doing 30 something days. Awesome. So but doing you're something doing different. something. And before you know it, in that 30 days, you've created a habit of liking doing things. And if it's the exercise, win win. I like that. All right. So where can people find you to find out more? If you've got a website, I've Are got, you on social media? I've got LinkedIn yep. as well as Facebook. So I've got uh, my Facebook is Quintessence Coaching Australia. How do you spell that for the listeners? Quintessence, Q-U-I-N-T-E-S-S-E-N-C-E, -E -S -S -E -E, Quintessence Coaching Australia. And the same would be Quintessence Coaching only uh, on LinkedIn. So as we know, LinkedIn is more of a business platform yep. um, where I would be more so promoting my workshops and where I do keynote speaking. Um, and then through my Facebook, the Quintessence um, Coaching Australia, is more sharing. Oh, sorry, I'm Mike. Uh, sharing um, words of wisdom, footnotes of inspiration, um, and where people can reach out and also, you know, reach out if they want coaching and stuff and go, hey, let's catch up. Are you doing any workshops coming up? Yes, actually. I am collaborating on a workshop and it is called Connected Leadership. So it is bringing um, knowing thyself. So it's blending um, the knowledge of the six core human needs with extended disc behavioral profiling. So it's a very deep, um, it's a dive into yourself, knowing about yourself and your own behavioral habits and what energy type you are. Then to bring that out in, and align it and be aware of all the different types of leadership styles there are, but how those leadership styles will serve you as your own um, to be true to yourself and what kind of culture you want to create and actually to know then what leadership style is going to suit different people because it's a, it's a workshop to help you understand that we all have a different map of the world 
and our values and our beliefs and to not impose yours but to understand and respect those and actually use the right communication that people want to be communicated with with leadership styles that suit. So it's a workshop on connected leadership. Yeah, nice. So yeah. I know you're you're based in the Northern Beaches in Sydney. Yeah. Is that where the workshops are? And if people are interested, where can they go to kind of book in a ticket or reserve a spot for those? We will be marketing on my Quintessence coaching um, LinkedIn. It will be marketing through there and my Facebook. The other avenue is, is that I've done some work previously with um, a meetup group called Girl Geek. And they are a fantastic group of 2,000 members of women who are just, some are men, but they've got this incredible, savvy, future thinking of um, IT technology. And they're just a great base of women between the ages of, of 20 to, to 35. They're our future. And um, I believe that leadership is a strong um, pathway for women. And it's also, um, it needs to step up. I, I think dumping now, we're trying to like change or influence the CEOs of now, like the 45s or 50s, those that are in there, but they're stuck in their ways. I think leadership needs to come from underneath and it needs to kick up the pants because there's way better ways to develop a team and be a very effective, awesome leader. I like that. All right, well, we've got to wrap this up. Um, I'll put links to your socials and any other things any other things that we spoke about i'll put that in the show notes for anyone interested but um apart from that thanks heaps for coming on it's been thanks, awesome alex it's been great thanks for having me all right guys if you enjoyed this please take a screenshot and share it i'd love to see who's listening and also please subscribe and give a rating on itunes sending positive vibes to everyone out there thanks heaps for listening